little quick update on where, where we're at. I've taken the main body parts and done some assembly with the arms, attached the muzzle ears, so basically head, torso, tail, and I have sprayed a uh, gloss coat over these to prep for panel lining and weathering. The product I used for gloss is the All Clad 2 Lacquer Clear Coat and sprayed uh, like two passes on these guys. I sprayed gloss black on the base plates, the puzzle pieces, which will be weathered. And the gloss black I used, again, was the all clad gloss black. They also have a, uh, a matte black as well. I sprayed gloss black and then chrome on the, on the ribbons to kind of contrast with the color of the uh, main bodies. Now I'm using all clad lacquer chrome and you have to spray these at a really low PSI in very light coats, two or three passes, and that should give you a pretty darn good chrome effect. Now the next step I'm going to do is a weathering pass. Before I do the panel lining, I'm gonna do some washes with some enamels. I've got some Mr. Weathering colors, some enamel washes. This one is a stain brown, so kind of a light, a light brown. A ground brown, which is a dark, much darker brown, and a uh, sandy wash, which is kind of like a sandy uh, yellow. I've also got some regular testers enamels here, uh, just some white, some rust, and and some brown. You can use these, add little dots of these, and then wash over, and some a little bit of a modulated surface effect. And I also have some Ammo Mig Enamel Wash German Dark Yellow to try. And then after the weathering pass, we'll do some of the panel lines and fill in the eyes with the Tamiya Panel Accent Wash. And to thin out the enamels, you can use some lighter fluid, like you would with panel washes, or slightly more corrosive enamel thinner. Be careful with this one. Now, one thing you have to be careful of when using enamel thinners is that against bare plastic, especially Bandai kits, they are they're not hardened like some other model brands. So if you get lighter fluid on the bare plastic due to the existing micro fractures, it'll make it even more brittle. So when there are points of stress, uh, when two parts kind of barely fit, or say like pegs, those will tend to crack because they're already under pressure. So just warning when using these, try not to get them on the interiors and uh, only use them on fully painted surfaces. So the next step is to take these guys, do a little bit of weathering, and uh, we'll be back after that. the result of the enamel weathering. After experimenting with a few of the colors, I decided that the best one for getting kind of a subtle look for this project and for these colors was the Sunday wash. Just to kind of get everything in a bit of a, a dusty coat um, and break up the pure surfaces here. I basically just put a little bit on the surface, kind of like a wash, and then brushed it around and Tried taking most of it off with the paper towel and then made sure to leave it in certain areas a little bit thicker than others. It's a little bit more prominent on the, the body here. A little bit more yellow now. A little bit more weathering on the feet where they're gonna sit and making sure it's the, the look is kind of asymmetrical on the bottom of the feet because they'll be sitting down and then on the back of the legs is a little bit heavier because that's where they'll be sitting. Pretty subtle on the tails, uh, but just enough to break up the, the pure color of the surface just to give it some inconsistencies in tone. So the next step was to lay down, after the gloss coat, some decals and some panel line wash. I did the panel line wash first and decided to, to use the same layer and do the decals. So there aren't a ton, but there are a few smaller ones, primarily from the some of the Haiku water slide decal sheets. But I've put them on a few small spots, like some tiny ones below the ears here, 
where there's a moving joint, some on the back of the head here, and then some on the back of the ears. And for the body, there's one on the chest, some minor ones on the inside, outside of the feet, and on the shoulder and wrist area. I went with slightly different versions on each one, depending on the color scheme. Right, again, detail on the chest. Uh, these ones are solid white on the inside and outside of the legs. And same thing on the, the wrists and shoulders. Now, the next step after this would normally be to uh, seal in these decals and the panel lining wash with another gloss coat. But since there aren't that many decals, I'm not too worried about it. It's started to move into the paint chipping portion using German Grey. I'm trying to add some minor chipping to the areas where there'd be contact between metal parts, so around the ears where it would rotate. So there's a, the difference here between the raw version type of chipping there versus that. And these are the uh, decals for the fox head. And a little bit more chipping around here. Now I was just using a small paintbrush, I'm doing it by hand. And the next step is to, after finishing a pass with that, is to use and do some sponge chipping just to get a little bit more randomness done a little bit around the, the muzzle, a little bit on the ears. I'm uh, trying to keep it a little bit subtle so that it doesn't stand out too much. But next time we come back, I'll have these all chipped up and we'll be able to seal those in. Finishing, we'll do some dry brushing and a little bit of weathering pigment. So we've got the pile set up here with some of the oils and a lot of the oil has seeped out already so that's a good sign. So next we will try to do some color modulation and weathering, a little bit of rust, a little bit of discoloration and uh, we'll move on to the next step. So I've started a few of the parts already, like the bases, just a little bit of uh, rust and discoloration. Going to focus a little bit on the center because that's where the figures are going to sit as well as a little bit of rust around the perimeter and just some pockets to change up the surface color. I also did the same to the the bows just to kind of give them more of a rusty patina look. I started off chrome but I just wanted to break that up a little bit. Age and weather these. I started on the body of the tiger. Got a couple different colors going on. We got the red for the rust, kind of a reddish brown, a white a dark umber and a brown, more of a tan color. And so I've started using a little bit of the rust in the, these areas here, trying to get a little bit of streaking happening, a bit of grime and overall wear, and to use some of the white and brown to kind of break up some of the surfaces a little bit, but some of the grime and the crack here between the, uh, the armor separation here on the legs, just to kind of darken the interior a little bit. And I focused a little bit more of the, the dirt on the bottom where they're sitting, um, as well as a little bit more rust on the, on the feet I'm probably kind of a little overboard, but as a whole, I don't think it's too far. I just have the other body and the heads to do and the tail, and we'll begin to wrap this up. Damn.
part of the way there. Got the pass on the body pretty much done. Alright, so here's the final results. So again, I just tried to focus on these mechanical attachment areas where they would see some little bit of rusting, a little bit of discoloration, as well as the, the lip of the neck here. And then a little bit of discoloration, with the browns and the whites in general, just kind of break up the surfaces and give it a little bit of a dingy look. As well as the tail. The fox tail. The fox head. Needs a little bit more work, but we worked a little bit of the wear up into the ears there. Essentially kind of work on the panel lines, a little bit of rust around the, the ear attachment areas there, and a little bit around the, the base there. It's kind of a mixture of rust and the dry brush metallic paint, and some of, some color modulation with the browns and whites, just to kind of play around with the, the surface a bit, and on the ears as well. Basically done on this pass as well. Bit of rust leaking out from the exposed chipped parts. A little bit of grime, surface modulation. A little bit more rust and grunge in between the panels there. So we've reached the final stage in the work in progress series. I'm going to be doing the final stage off camera. I'm going to be doing a, a final flat coat and then weathering with the dry pigment. I'm going to focus on the, the feet, the bottom of the, the body, where the figures are sitting, and the base. Maybe a little bit on the top of the head just to give an overall um, sandy, dirty look. And then maybe a tiny bit of soot or, or rust to complement that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is the final part of this, of the work in progress series. The next video is just gonna be a showcase of the final build.